Today we're going to check out Prusa Link, another way that you can monitor and control your Prusa 3D printer. Hello everyone, Chris here, and this is one that I've been wanting to check out for a while now. Prusa Link is the software that was developed by Prusa to control their print farm. It's been spruced up and paired with Prusa Connect so that we can use it on our 3D printers. Now there's a couple things you need to know about it before you give it a try. You will have to have an actual Prusa serial number. You can't just use any 3D printer with this. Even if you built something like a bear, if you use the board from a Prusa kit, you'll be okay. But if you supplied your own board, even if it was an Ultima Machine Einzi, it's not gonna have the correct serial number on the chip inside, so you can't use that Connect service. Also, it does only support the Mark III. Hopefully, they will add support for the Mini soon. And you do have to have a Raspberry Pi for this. I know those are pretty hard to get right now, but hopefully I can offer some advice on how you could do this with a number of different models of Pi, so maybe that makes it a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and check it out. It's not going to be near as robust as a lot of the things we're used to using, like Octoprint. It doesn't even have a camera service at this time. It is still in beta. But I do think there's enough farms out there right now that are using the Mark III that this could be a really handy tool. So let's jump in, see what kind of hardware we're going to need to get all this set up get it configured, and just see how it goes. And here's all the hardware you're gonna to need to get this set up. I recommend getting an SD card that's around 16 gig. You don't want over 32. That can cause problems with FAT32 formatting. Also speed, maybe a number 10 and A1 would be good, just to make sure you have the performance you need. Now a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero Two is going to be preferable because you can plug these directly into the back of the INC board. Of course, the two is going to be much faster. And you need 18 millimeter pins to connect through the board. They have to be pretty long, so make sure they're 18 millimeter. Links to all this in the description. When you get your pins, I recommend you go with the doubles, just so they have a better footprint. They go on the board right here. You skip this set of pins, and then you put them on the second set. But you only need five of these pins. I just solder the five I need and then pull them out. And here's what it's going to look like after you get soldered. Remember, you have seven rows, but you only have four pins here. We start on the second one, and then one pin down here. That should be all you need. Now, we can build our SD card. We have to put an image on it, then we can load it on the Pi and put it on the printer. As always, Prusa has great documentation on how to set up Prusa Link out here. Just walk through it step by step. I'm just trying to make a condensed version. But really all we need is the Prusa Link image. You do want to make sure you're running firmware 3.10 and up, but we can just scroll down. And we're going to need the Raspberry Pi flash tool. We've been using that for the last couple of videos. If you don't have it, you can download it from here. And the Prusa Link image. Now, Prusa Link does come in a gzip file format. You do need to extract it. I like to use 7-zip. If you have 7-zip installed, you can just right click, go down to 7-zip, and then hit extract files. And then that's going to give you the prusalink.img file that you need to use with that Raspberry Pi image tool. And then on the Raspberry Pi tool, you just choose OS, scroll all the way to the bottom, use custom, and then find that prusalink.img file that you just extracted. We'll hit open. Then we can choose storage with your SD card mounted on your computer. There's our 16 gig card. It's going to erase the whole thing. And before you hit write, you need to configure your wireless network. So we'll hit the cog. You can set your host name. Let's just call it prusalink. Leave SSH disabled and the user ID and password, and then check configure wireless LAN. Enter your wireless information. Remember, this is case sensitive. And then enter your password. And hit save. Then you're ready to hit write to write out your image to your SD card. Now that the write is complete, we can go ahead and hit continue. We can unmount it from the computer, then we'll put it on our Raspberry Pi, and then we can move 
to mounting it on our 3D printer mainboard. On the back of your printer, if you have the Prusa control box, there's going to be a cutout. You can clip this out with your clippers, and that will expose the header pins that you need for your Pi Zero. The Pi Zero should fit exactly in there. There's also a spacer you can print out that fit the pins on the Pi Zero and give it just a little bit extra support. The spacer will slide over those pins and fit down in the mounting holes on the Pi Zero. And then that top pin you put on your Pi Zero is going to go in that top left hole right up here. The whole thing will fit exactly in this space. And they just push right through into the header on the other side of the board. No other support needed. And the board will be able to power up the Pi Zero just fine. And speaking of power, we always have to talk about that when we use Raspberry Pis. Now, the Pi Zero is going to be great with just the board power. And I'm not saying you can't power up another Pi with that power, but it might not go as well. You might need a little bit more current than the board can provide. And every board is going to be a little bit different. I have successfully powered up a Pi 4 off of an SKR board before, but I've also had issues doing that, so your mileage will vary. Now, can you use other Pis rather than the Zero to do this? You should be able to. This is a Pi 4, but all these Pis should have the same pinout. There's nothing saying that you can't use these four pins to control your 3D printer, just like you can on the Zero. You just have to build a cable that plugged into the back of the board, or wherever it might go. The image should work exactly the same on any of the Pis. So I don't see any reason why you can't use any Raspberry Pi you wish. With all that said, I've never actually tried it on another type of Raspberry Pi, only with the Zero. But I don't see why it wouldn't work. So if you have, please leave a comment below and let us know how it went. Now let's move to powering up the printer and finishing our configuration. After your Raspberry Pi is installed and you power up, give it 5 or 10 minutes. It does take a while, especially with that Zero, the original one, it is pretty slow. But you should see your IP eventually on your front screen. I did want to mention also, you do have to enable your Raspberry Pi port to get this to work. So if you go into the menu, go down to settings, make sure our Pi port is set to on. Also, if you don't see that IP, you can scroll all the way down to support and your IP is going to be down in here. So just in case it doesn't pop up on the screen, you can go grab it. You shouldn't actually need the IP. When we created that image, you can use that dot local address. So let's head over there now. So you should be able to just go to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then whatever name you used when we made that SD card. We just did Prusa link and then dot local. And here's the setup wizard. So we'll just go ahead and hit authorization, hit next. And it already knew about our printer's serial number. That's because it gets it from the chip on the board. Now, I have seen it where you get a 500 error when you're trying to run through this. That's usually because the firmware doesn't know about the serial number. It actually pulls that serial from the same chip that's used when you interface with the board USB. So try to cable up USB and reload EEPROM or just reload the firmware. That should pull in that serial number and fix that problem. So give it a try. If not, you can always contact Prusa Support. But from here, we're going to set up a username and password. We'll just go with Chris. They need a seven character password. And then you have your API key. Your API key will be used for things like Prusa Slicer, so you can connect up to this printer and send it files. But you will be able to get that from Prusa Connect here in a moment if you need it. So we'll continue, hit set up printer. So we can give our printer a name. This is the Prusa I use on my shelf, so we'll call it Prusa Shelf. And the location of the printer is on the bottom right. That's how I keep track of which one's which. So we'll hit Setup Printer. Your host is going to be connect.prusa3d.com, so you can keep track of all these via the internet. You can leave these default. TLS is the security. And then port, that's the default port. We'll go to Recap. Here's all your information you just put in. See how it pulled the serial number? That came directly from the board. 
We'll hit next. It's going to take us out to Prusa Connect on the web and show us our printer. And then all you have to do is hit the add printer button. And then you can go to your printer overview. I've already printed on this one before. I've got my G code files out there. If you've included it, you can have the thumbnail where it shows you what you're going to print, what the status of the printer is. And this is the window that's going to be really handy when you have multiple printers. But if you don't want to use it from Prusa Connect, you have to get out to the internet to use it, you can just use it on your local network. Just open up that .local address again, prusalink.local, enter that username and password you did during the wizard, and that will take you directly to that machine. So this is just on your local network. It's a very simple interface. Again, there's not going to be near as many features as some other options, but you've got your dashboard, you can interact upload directly, interact with Prusa Slicer, you've got your projects, this is your SD card on the printer as well as what you've loaded to the Raspberry Pi SD card. It even has some Prusa Link G codes, some examples out there. You've got your temperature screen while it's running, typical control, you can move it around, disable the steppers, and then in settings it lets you know things about your printer and the system version that you have with Prusa Link. There's more than enough here to be completely functional. And then if you want to use that Prusa Connect piece, you can look at multiples. And of course, it does integrate with Prusa Slicer. So if you hit Prusa Slicer here, it's going to give you that API key. And if you go into Prusa Slicer, we'll just select that printer that I have already configured out there but we'll go to printer settings and if you go to the cog up here on the printer title that'll let you edit the physical machine and here's where you select your Prusa link so from here instead of Octoprint you just hit Prusa link the IP or the URL you can use that Prusa link .local if you'd like and then enter your API key that you copied from the Prusa link screen so we'll just paste it right in here and hit OK you can test it if you'd like connections working so now you can send stuff to it directly and side tip if you want to use those thumbnails come down here and enable g-code thumbnails and you have to tell it what size you'd like it to use just enter 16 by 16 comma 220 by 124 and that should get you a nice size thumbnail that you can use in your other programs like Prusa Connect, Prusa Link and then after you get that set up you just hit slice and you can send a printer, you can upload and print, we'll just upload for now. Upload and print will automatically kick it off. It'll transfer it over to Prusa Link. Prusa Link's going to tell you that it has a project uploaded successfully. Go to Projects, Prusa Link G Codes, and there's our new project. And there's your nice thumbnail. It's going to get you print time estimates, estimated end times, last modified, material to use, you can start the print right from here. You can download the G-code, whatever you want to do. Everything you need to control that print is right here on this one screen. And just for fun, I spun up another Prusa Link on one of my other Mark III machines. Let's go ahead and add it in here too so we can see what it looks like here in Prusa Connect. We'll just go to the new URL. I just called it Prusa Link 2. Same thing, we'll run through the wizard. We can set up the same information for this new printer if you wish. It goes by the serial number, and as long as they're different, you should be okay. I'm going to call this one Prusa ENC because this is one I have in an enclosure. And we'll just say location is enclosure. Connect.prusa3d.com. Next. There's all our info. Save and register printer. Here it is add printer. Printer add successful, printer detail. And here's the printer page. And if you go up to printers, you can see the list. They're both sleeping right now. But you can do all your interaction with all of your Prusa machines right here from Prusa Connect. It makes a very handy interface. Even all the other items over here that you can interact via Prusa Connect with, the jobs page, everything's really clean. It's going to show you multiple thumbnails for all the different jobs and some stats, but your storage, there's all your files, even if it's on the SD card or on Prusa Connect. 
You can control it. I like this slider here. You can just slide it up and down to adjust Z or move around on coordinates on the bed. It'll go exactly to that point. So that's kind of nifty. Filament, load, unload filament. It's all right here. And some of your general settings. But as with Prusa, how they do most things, there's usually also a wealth of information available. So if you want a deep dive on one of these, we'll just go into the printer. And then you can click on that job. And while the job's running, it's going to give you stats. But you can even go down here and it'll graph it out for you. Print fan speed, extruder fan speed. And it's good information to have. But also, like, as it's using auto-cooling, it's going to show you the print fan speed at certain parts. It could help you diagnose an issue in your 3D print. And as probably a lot of you, I love stats. And just to show the local version, this is the Prusa Link itself that lives on that Raspberry Pi Zero. This is what it looks like while it's printing. Dashboard just gives you a quick status of the job. Nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. And just for fun, so we can see it in operation, let's go ahead and send some maker coins to these printers. Send one to this one on the shelf. We'll just hit upload and print. And then we'll switch printers and send one over to the enclosure printer. And then from the printers tab, you can get a status of what they're both doing, how long they've been doing it. If there's any issues, they will read attention. If there's a message on the screen, I think that's pretty handy. And of course you can go in and get even more information. You can get all the last states. This is from when I changed the filament. I think it's just kind of cool that it shows all these different states and you can see a history. Very nice interface, very straightforward and clean. So there it is, Prusa Link and Prusa Connect. One other thing I did want to mention, it is currently not compatible with the MMU2. So if you're trying to use Prusa Link in that configuration, we're going to have to wait for support on that. But I really do like the stripped down interface that Prusa Link uses. Now on the local one, I do kind of wish you could use it with other 3D printers. Like you didn't have to register that serial number with Prusa, but I get why they're doing that. It's so that you can use that Prusa Connect. That's a really handy feature to be able to see all your printers on one screen. If you had a farm, I'm not really sure how you would get along without it. This is really going to cut down on the time you have to spend monitoring one printer after another with different parts and different situations. So I really like what they've done here. And what Prusa does is they just increase the value of their ecosystem. From the printer, the slicer, the filament, and now how you can control them all at once. This is just another great step that Prusa has taken. So hopefully you found this interesting. That's it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.